Hey, what's up everybody? Thank you for checking out today's episode. I get a question quite often from a lot of different people. Um, a lot of the times when we're working with clients through a website project and then you know extending that beyond into additional services and consulting and all these other hands-on things, one of the questions that pops up pretty regularly is about short-term wins, quick wins, time to value quickly and so on. Because in many cases, um, you know, people will launch a website or they'll go through a large SEO project and it can take a long time to see the fruit from that, right? Like we can, we think about SEO and, and things with um, trying to rank for, for different terms and keywords. Um, yeah, there's certainly ways that we, you know, you can speed that process up, but in general, you're playing the long game and you're trying to really make sure that you have, um, a secure grasp on the market down the road. So what are some ways then to put some some opportunities in the pipeline to put some revenue in the bank. What are some ways to do that? And so um, I get asked about it a lot. I wanted to go ahead and record a session around these campaign ideas that will help you generate sales within the next 30 days. Now, I do all of these. Our company does all of these at various levels. And so these are not things that um, I'm just, you know, we're just going to wing it and tell you to try something because it hasn't been done. These are proven strategies and I've learned them from a number of experts in the, in, you know, in, in the field. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's really good ways to, to help you grow and to help you try and put a little bit more value into your pipeline. So the first one that I want to talk about is about selling small. Okay. And so when I, when I say selling small, what I mean by that is really selling something that's a low ticket item, selling something that has smaller fees, something that's less than $100 generally. And I would even say as low as you're willing to sell it. Um, th th that makes sense. And so in, in when you're, you know, these kind of things, you want to think about things that, that exist already. You want to think about things that are uh, easy to produce, something that is not customized and uh, unique to every single individual because that's that's not something that you're going to be able to just constantly repurpose. You're not going to make any money on it. Now, here's the thing. I don't really think this is about making money, to be quite honest. I don't think selling a product like this is about, you know, you to, to make a lot of money off of a hundred dollar product, you're going to sell massive amount in order to to make your um, to make your monthly goal. So why is this important? Well, there is a psychology play here because when someone makes a transaction with you, they are no longer considering whether or not to give you money because they've already done that. And in many cases, that a major, major hesitancy to take the next step with you. OK, I think about any major purchase you've ever done, like you don't want to just on a whim, first conversation, throw in 50K to do something for your business. And in many cases, we might even have that much money right away in order to do something for the business. So you want to take uh, a little bit of a different avenue here now. The reason I think this is really helpful is because it's about creating that value. You're building that trust with your customers. And there's a different there's a different mechanism in our brain that's triggered when instead of saying, do I want to trust this company to buy something from them and spend money with them compared to do I want to buy something again or the next level up from this company? And so this is really about a lead offer a lead, um, I don't want to say generation because they probably already are a lead, although it could be a lead generation offer if they, you don't have their contact info yet. But this is really about taking a small commitment to become a, a trusted user, a trusted customer who trusts you and getting them to do the next step with you. OK, and so um, in many cases, what I would recommend doing here is repurposing existing things, existing documents. You have templates, you have spreadsheets, um, you have different things that you use to accomplish your services. So, for example, our company uh, is we do a lot of website development. We do a lot of custom website development for startups, for tech brands, for consultants and so on. A custom website for us is probably in the realm of 30K. In most cases, it can be a lot higher in some cases, too. Could be lower, but, you know, 30K is probably where you would want to start with us. And so. In order to do this, to do that entire process with us, we have a number of different things that we've created, some proprietary systems over the years that have helped us speed up our process internally, one of them being wireframes. And so we have a very proprietary system of thinking about how do we think about 
wireframing an about page or a product page or a service page or even pricing page and what are the what kind of framework do we want to use on those pages not really thinking about the de design thinking about layout and context and so we have this entire system that we use as like a starting point for all of these pages so that we can go in and start to you know work with our clients fit the information into these wireframes we manipulate these wireframes and so on and then now we have this custom uh, production. So what we were saying in, in, internally was like, you know what, those wireframes are actually really valuable. We could package these up and create, use them as a baseline offer and not really a whole lot of work on our part because they already exist. And let's use these as a lead offer to some people who might be wanting to, you know, test the waters and try something out on their own. So we used existing docs, existing information. We repurposed that and we sold it for, I think we sold them for like $37. And, uh, you know, we made, I think we just tested it. We just sent it to our audience. I think we made like $1,200 off of it, which is not bad. Um, but the real value comes as the follow-up happens and we get into the weeks following because guess what? I started getting questions. I started having, we had a lot of really good follow-up emails about using them and onboarding. I started having people book time on my calendar who were in there and we were like, okay, this is actually really, really good, but it's really overwhelming and I can't do this by myself. I definitely need help. And in that process, we had built trust all along because they got to see what was in there. They got to see the value. And so using these small, um, lead in offers of things that already exist that are a part of your process. It's kind of like a sample, right? It's kind of like, um, like a little appetizer, if you will. And so we would call this like a land and expand model to where you're selling something really low ticket. It's very low barrier. Some of these clients that we work with, um, you know, a $37 product is, is almost nothing for them to try and get that into their sales budget or their marketing budget for the year, right? So it's a really easy way um, to, to provide value to people, but also to help them see the value that you can create in the long run and build some really great relationships from there. Now, what you would do for this is you'd build a page on your website, a sales page or landing page of some kind, and you're gonna simply embed a payment link inside of there. Now using HubSpot, this is really easy. You could do any other, um, any other CMS providers as well. But we did this with HubSpot. It works very well and it's a really great uh, scenario. And what you're doing again is you're relying on that post sale support. You're really relying on it as a paid discovery almost because if part of your post sale support is conversations, it's, it's getting a one on one. It's let me help you onboard. Let me help you install these the right way. Um, yeah, you probably are going to lose money if you sold it for $50 and you spent in, you know, a 30 minute consultation with this person while you're doing it, you're probably losing money in that. But it's again, this is not about making money. This is about now you have a paid discovery process. You are getting people on a sales call and they don't even realize it. And your sales team is much more likely to have a little bit more leniency and credibility with this company because they trust you. And they're not really seeing it as a as a sales call. They're seeing it as a consultation, as a help, as a support piece. So the second one that is another really good little nugget here, a really good opportunity. Um, you could actually combine this with campaign number one as an option too. Uh, but this is looking at your closed lost uh, column inside of your deal stages. Okay. Specifically, we want to target sales that we didn't win, but those that went with a different solution. All right. And now I don't know what how you might have, if you're tracking things in a CRM, if you're tracking things in spreadsheets or what you might be using. Um, I use HubSpot, obviously. And, and so in my deal stages, I actually created a separate, um, a separate deal property. So when I move a, a deal stage into the closed lost, meaning like they're not going to work with us at the end, you either go to closed one, meaning you sign a contract or closed lost, you didn't sign a contract. And we're going to take that deal out of the pipeline. Um, if, if I created a property in there that lists all the different reasons why, and I have about five or six standard ones that, you know, most would fall into specifically, I have one called went with a different solution or a different provider or a different agency or a different vendor but solution is fine. And the reason I want to target these specifically is because I have an in to create a conversation in three months or in six months. And that's really valuable because I then can use that to open the door as a way to check in with them. I can use that as a way to see how things are going and see if there are other things that um, 
that, that are causing a problem for them. So what you would want to do is just a strategy that you could use here. So you would create a page on your website. I would use personalization. Uh, if you're using HubSpot, you're going to use smart content. It's going to have their name. Uh, but I would also use personalized video. So I, I'm actually recording this with Vidyard. You could use Vidyard. You could use Loom. You could just literally use QuickTime or Zoom and, and record yourself a video. But I take that video. I put it on a page. It's a personalized text at the top. It has a video and it's me reaching out and talking through whether it's um, recap of our last conversation. It's ways to uh, some ideas for what's coming down the pike. It's things to be aware of inside of changes with HubSpot and, you know, we'd love to open the door. And I reach out to the cold uh, or the the uh, the deals that were closed lost. I use uh, a, a variety of things. You could you could do phone calls. You could do LinkedIn outreach. Um, I like email and handwritten notes. I think it's really easy to do a quick email. Um, and you could set up sequences and workflows inside of HubSpot to automate all that. Handwritten notes go a long way today, friends. It is uh, it is quite powerful to get a letter from somebody. It's almost like non-existent. And so just a quick stack of notes on your desk, a quick message, boom, throw it in an envelope and send it just to check in. I guarantee the company that they went with instead of you is not doing that. And it's a really great opportunity for you to, um, to open the door there. Now, this is the avenue that you want to take specifically with when, uh, people that went with a different solution. You want to find out what solution they are using. It wouldn't really work so well. You, you would want to change it if, like, let's just say they didn't do anything or they just went cold and never, you know, never did anything beyond that. When you're talking about somebody that went with another, for me, let's say another agency, they chose, we were down in an RFP situation, down to three people, they or two people, instead of choosing Web Canopy Studio, they went with another agency. I would want to try and find out who that other agency is and not to talk bad about other agencies, but everybody has their weaknesses. Web Canopy Studio has our weaknesses. Sometimes it, for us, we're a small agency. We're 15 people. Okay. And so in many cases, they choose when, when we're not chosen in a situation, they're choosing a much larger, larger entity. And so they might go with an agency that has 200 people and they're a global company. And that's fine because again, what's the phrase? Like no one gets fired for hiring Oracle, right? Because you know, why would you go with this tech startup you've never heard of? Or you could go with this giant brand. There's just some um, credibility involved with the size of a company that you choose. And that's totally fine. Totally get it. But I'm going to play to that and the weaknesses because I know if they're working with a 200, 300, 500 person company, then I know that they're personal personalization, their custom one on ones, the amount of attention that they're probably getting is not nearly on the level that my company would provide for them. So I'm going to talk about that. I'm going to I'm going to use that as my way in in that particular example. Um, and there's any number of ways that that, you know, you could you could skew that. But you want to talk about those weak spots, not in a way that you're talking bad about it. But I'm going to try and like use use that information in my conversations. OK, and so I'm going to specifically go after close loss opportunities right now. You could pull up a list inside of my HubSpot CRM and I could pull up a list of probably 10 people that I probably have a pretty good shot at at least getting a call from one or two. OK, and so that's kind of the uh, the idea there. Next, and this is the last one, a paid training. So kind of like number one. Kind of like the first one that we talked about. This is you utilizing um, some kind of paid engagement with you. And this is not to your closed loss, although it's a, it is a good way to open the door. You could get them to come to that. This is more about your, your lead list. You could run ads to this too, but it's kind of a shot in the dark. The first couple of times you do it, I would just go with the free version and use your, your email list that you have. Um, I would look at this from a webinar or a workshop process. Now, why paid versus free? Everybody has been on webinars. Everybody has come to webinars. Everybody has come to these, you know, hour long presentations. You hear about products, you hear about these really boring things. And so people don't attend. They hope to just get a replay and they hope to leave. And it's, it's literally like a waste of time. But we as, as marketers feel like we have to do them because companies want to see that they're there and so on. But 
we all know the performance of webinars when they're done in that kind of a format kind of suck. And so if you watch back to any of these other episodes that we've done and, and you listen to some of the other uh, context, we talk a lot about using your website in a way to gather uh, audiences through VSLs and master classes and so on. And those are usually all free. Um, what I would want to challenge you here is to do a live paid workshop. Okay. Works very well. We've executed this a few times um, and it's done wonders for us. And I'll, and I'll talk why in just a moment, but um, I would make it lengthy. I would make it two to three hours long. I would want to have it. So it's not just a quick 45 minute session. I would charge again, anywhere from 50 to a hundred to you could go, you know, you could make it a, a more extensive one, 500 bucks, thousand dollars. Um, the last one I did was $37. So, uh, it's up to you to kind of choose what you want to do. Um, I like to, to use this same kind of concept, kind of like number one campaign, number one about sm selling small and use it as a, you know, a dollar amount. That's almost a no brainer to, to do, but when somebody comes to a paid training, something that they paid for, it's a mindset shift because they are, it's not just, oh yeah, that's just this free thing. I'll sign up for it. Hopefully I get a replay. It's I paid dollars to make a commitment to be at this thing. And so it's a, you just think about things differently when you're, when money is on the line or money is transacted, our mindset shifts. And so the amount of people that you have register is going to be considerably less. We might have 150 people sign up for a free webinar. We might have 45 people do a paid training. Okay. Sometimes less than that. I've done them with 15 before. And so, and that's totally fine. There's no wrong number with that. And honestly, the smaller the group is, the more engagement and tailored you can get in that presentation to talk to them. And again, it's a psychological play. The reason that we want to do this we want to make it hands on because they have to see the value in working with you. They have to earn that trust with you. OK, and so I want it to be a collaborative workshop. In many cases, uh, I will create a, uh, a format on my iPad and I am connected my iPad to Zoom and I'll go through and I'll draft up my notes and I'll talk through everything and draw things out on my iPad during this workshop. And everybody else that's there, guess what, is drawing the same thing on their paper that they're documenting or they're taking notes. And in many ways, that's really valuable because I have people showing me their notes afterwards. I'll be like, hey, everybody want to write this down. Let's hold it up and let's let's see where we're at. And so you're giving that you're literally giving your audience so much value because the, the the connection that happens there is just invaluable. And again, it's interactive. We don't want it to be a lecture. If you're just lecturing people for three hours, could you imagine how boring that is? Secret sauce here is that the topic of what you're talking about should be an objection for buying your services or your product. You want to make this something that they are naturally going to have a reason to say no. Why would they say no to doing this? Uh, because if you can break down that objection in a three hour long workshop, guess what is not going to come up when you have a sales call with them? Exactly. So think about some of the strongest objections that you have that you can control. Now, obviously, if you're you know, you're talking to someone who's three levels down and you're never going to get to talk to the decision maker and the decision maker is the person who's going to call the shots on whether or not they make the purchase. You might not have a whole lot of topics that you can create here, but in, in a lot of ways, um, you, you can use this as a, as a way to break down different objections. An example for us would be in many cases, we have, um, issues with, with clients not being able to provide content or they don't want to provide all the content. They think, they think a large website project is this overwhelming, massive um, content thing mm. that they have to go through and they don't want to take the time. So they just keep pushing it off. They know it's valuable. They know it's important, but they have other things that are way more important at that time than to sit and write for days and days and days to get the content where it needs to be. So what do we do? We have a conversion copywriting workshop. <laughs> And I show them just how easy it is to do this. And I walk them through step by step how we create conversion copy. We even tie in our wireframes to that and how that works. And so now we've created a workshop that literally breaks down the objection of, I don't have time to write content. Um, well, we show you how in this workshop, you learn how to do it. And then you don't, when you buy with us, you don't even end up doing it because my team does it. So that's the whole premise and the, the purpose of that. 
And then what, what you have to do here, and you cannot forget to do this, is pitch at the end. Okay, you have to do this workshop and pitch at the end of the workshop. And the way that I usually do this is um, just talking through, look, we just sat here for two and a half hours. We went through all of this information. You see how valuable this is. This is actually just one piece of what it is that we do with our clients. And so um, you're welcome to take this information and run with it. But if you want to fast track this, if you want to get this to the next level and you really don't want to you know, wait for six months until there's the time is right, um, I want you to book a call on my calendar because we're going to work through this together and we're going to take, take care of it with you. And worst case, you get on this call and we're not going to be able to, to help you right then, but I'm going to give you some ideas and some ways that you can actually do this on your own even faster. And so um, generally, there's not a lot of objection into there. And so example being, we did a workshop in November of last year. I had about 35 people buy that workshop. Okay. Um, admittedly, I was a little upset. I thought we should have more. And so I was like, man, I, I really thought the top, like, I really thought we were going to like knock it out of the park and get a lot of people signed up for it. But we only had 35. Um, and so what ended up happening was we had 35 people, all 35 showed up. Uh, we had by the end, by the time we got all the way through, I had, um, I think 33 on when we finished the workshop and I got to pitch to 33 people. Now compare that to webinars. I might have 150 people sign up for a webinar on a topic. I might have 40 show up to the actual webinar. And by the time I'm at the end, you might, depending on how well my, my presentation was, guarantee there's not going to be 40 people on to hear me pitch. And even then, they're probably watching the webinar on one screen while they're doing their work or their whatever on their other screen, right? So they're just not engaged and they don't care. So that is why you would do a paid training like this. That is why you would think through that. And again, the way that you would make this something of value is you're going to build that on your website using landing pages. You're going to use um, a, a page to have them sign up for this. You're going to use a payment link. I use HubSpot again for all those payment links because it's super easy and I can track everything. I can also create lists inside of HubSpot that gate the access to who gets the follow ups and so on. Even if they don't book a call from my workshop, I have a really solid follow up process that, that talks to them and engages with them over time so that I can get them to still book a call. OK, so all of that being said, those are three campaign ideas help you getting sales in the next 30 days. I hope it's helpful. I'd love to hear your thoughts on if you've tried these before, how it's working. Please share anything that you have with us. Uh, we'd love to know more about which one of these might be helpful if you start to implement them and, and run with them right away. Um, that being said, you need help with landing pages. We've got you. We have a brand new landing page pack uh, of themes inside of the HubSpot Marketplace. Um, please have a look. There should be a link inside of the notes here. You want to go check that out and see all the different. I literally have a landing page. Our company has built these amazing pages that you can just out of the box, plug and play. Uh, you get access to wireframes and there's a course in there and there's all kinds of really great information. So definitely take a look at that. I think that's it for today. Let me know if you guys have any questions. My name is John Aiken and we'll see you next time. Thank you.